If you were with anyone, it's Prince Harvey. The little great man puts it through. Well, Petrie, has he sealed it? Del Sando, William hand pass. Don't tell me. Close him down. Thomas is on fire. Brown again. Here we go. Here we go. So preliminary finalists, but a long way from it at the moment of decision that night. David King, they've recruited to win it. I'm not sure that they should shirk away from that, but are they in fact good enough? I think they are. I think they've got class on every line now. I think that uh, what Del Santo offered them a couple of seasons ago really projected this list forward. And they've recruited gun midfielders, ball-winning midfielders with their first-round pick over the last five to six years. So they, they've stocked well in terms of getting their hands on the ball in the middle. They've got a Ruckman who plays every week in mm. Goldstein, so they don't need to worry about that position too much. Um, but now they've got the edges filled. You know, Higgins will be a great player for them with what they lack. They lack that, that polish on the outside. His pre-season is showing that. His pre-season has been fantastic. Mm. Been used predominantly as a, as a half-forward Forward, flanker. Yep. Wells and Harvey now don't need to be stars for them week in, week out in the middle of the ground. They can be those flanker types. And I just think Jared Waite is a unique beast because he's capable of a six-goal game at any time. And with the exception of Drew Petrie, they haven't had that player for a long time. So the landscape's changed for the Kangaroos. They accept that they're in this fight to win it now. So just before we open it up, the, the list, the age demographic in particular, Yeah. I mean, this is, it's a startling graphic. Well, everyone wants to say that your list changes by, by, by one player. If Brent Harvey retires, that drops down to the uh, 16th youngest list in the competition, <laughs> which is not quite right. But have a look at North Melbourne in the last four to five years. In 2011, they were ranked 14th oldest, 12th oldest in 2012, 14th in 2013. That's the year as they just rebuilded with the draft in the middle of the ground. And then they've spiked the last couple of um, drafts via free agency and, and keeping hold of some of those... Uh, some of those talented older players, and I think it served them well. I, I really think that they know they're in the fight this year. Are they right in it, Jerry? I think they're uh, a chance to win the flag. I, I'm concerned about uh, skill level. I think they've recruited well to build the skill level over the last two years, Del Sano and Higgins in particular. I, I get a bit concerned about the Kangaroos' decision-making and uh, accuracy coming out of defence. Uh, McDonald is a good young kid. But I think he's got to get better with his, uh, with his feet. Wright, Atley, McMillan. I think all are prone to uh, being a bit nervous with their skilled uh, ex execution. And if that's something that they can improve on, I think uh, it's going to set them up well. I think they've got a decision to make up in the forward line, whether they go with black or they go with brown. It's a coloured decision, <laughs> but uh, a backup <laughs> right. Go with brown. Or uh, they go with black. And I think if they decide not to go with black, he goes then into the mix with... Robbie Tarrant and, uh, and Tippett as to whether or not he can play in the back half because if they can get all those boxes ticked, there's not many that are missing from a flag chance. Well, Jared, that is my, my biggest concern is their back half. Uh, I look at their numbers last year in the finals and we're talking about Thompson, who is a star. Uh, Ferrito's been a great player, but you put them on the big guys, they get goals kicked on them. You've kicked goals on them before. You, know, you look at their final system, uh, finals last year, Essett and uh, Danaher kicks four goals. He's a big bloke. Hawkins, you know, just about snatched the game away from him in a quarter, but he kicks five. Then you go to a, a prelim final. Their big boys up there mm. kick nine between them and mm. take eight contested marks. They get marks and goals kicked against them, unfortunately. But they've addressed it, haven't they? By well, experimenting with Tarrant. Okay, now Grimer's, but Grimer's out. So Grimer usually takes that. So you bring Tip in. So like Grimer flight. hasn't been able to do it. That, that, well, to me, it's not a big loss. Let's be honest, because those numbers you're reading out there were Grimer's opponents. So I think it's... Chosen okay, man. so does Tippett, well, can, Tarrant... can Tippett take over, or do they need both Tippett and Tarrant to be down there? Well, Tippett's put on about 10 kilo in one mm. pre-season, so he's, he's actually been groomed for that role. You had the same pre-season. I've had the same <laughs> pre-season. I've actually got him covered by a couple. But, um, Tarrant's the other one. We just haven't seen Robbie Tarrant play I football. I want Tarrant down back. I think he'd be really good down back. We've seen his brother do it at Freedman to play down back in the Collingwood. I think he can work for them, but... I'm, I'm questioning whether they need both of them down there. They need two big-bodied players down there. They love Thompson to play on the smaller players yeah. down there because he comes off and helps. Is he capable yeah. enough one-on-one -on -one in that big wrestle? Well, these are the questions they need to find out pretty quick because they they're both inexperienced down there. Mm. So I'm not saying let's throw them down there, it's going to work. Mm. They might get absolutely belted from 
pillar to post in the first couple of rounds, it mightn't work. But I'm saying I think they need to try it because Thompson, Ferrito, Hans is not a big key defender. Mm. So those guys get beat up by the big, big boys. Well, from what we've seen in the challenge, they've been pretty good. I mm. think they've done the right thing. It's uh, The box is not ticked yet because we haven't seen it through a season, but it's auguring pretty well for the Kangaroos. Brownie, I, I admire your stationary technique, incidentally. I think that's a beautiful setup. You, you've <laughs> spent the highlighter really well in the first part of North Melbourne season. This is a searching examination that they've been handed in the fixture. Well, it is. We'll read the first eight weeks out. Adelaide, Brisbane Lions, Port Adelaide, Geelong, Hawthorne, Richmond, Essendon, and Fremantle. So that's the hardest start of any team in the mm. competition. So we'll know. You might look at it and go, well, geez, tough start for North Melbourne. But if they're genuine grand final contenders, they've got to come out of that at least so probably five, five and three. Yeah. So maybe even four and four is all right. Year. But they've got to show their medal. You'd like them to win more of them than they lose. Um, just to show where they can cope with yeah. the big boys. Because they've got to be able to beat the boys. They the big boys last year. They beat all top five, yeah, uh, yeah, other top did. five teams last year. Well, and, they're, and, they're, and they're, the thing is... They've got to go to the next level is their leadership because against the poorer sides last year uh, that have bad games or bad quarters, to me that shows a lack of leadership or certainly a lack of, a lack of experience when it comes to leadership. Can their leaders stand up? Now, we know Brent Harvey's got the experience, but I don't see him as a hugely vocal leader out there. Andrew Swallows, a leader, I think, leads by actions. He's won three best and fairest, and he's a fantastic mm -hmm. leader. He's not a vocal leader. Can the Zeebles and the Cunningtons and the, and the Gibsons, you know, probably a bit much to ask for young McDonald in a second year, can they step up to the plate and arrest, uh, arrest a, a, a slide? You know, if they're having a bad five or ten mm. minutes, they get three or four goals kicked on them, can they turn around really quickly and right the ship? Or are they just going to have a bad quarter where they get seven or eight goals kicked on them and it can cost them a game and it'll cost them big finals. What will Jared Waite do for them? I mean, seven times in his career he's kicked five goals yeah. or more. What will, he, what will he do? Jared Waite is a great picker and I think he, he can get them to the next level. You know, he can get them to a grand final. If everything goes right, takes the pressure off Drew Petrie. A bit like similar to what we spoke about at Geelong with Clark and Hawkins. Now spreads the defence and obviously... Uh, Drew Petrie's ageing a little bit, but they're both different players, much like Hawkins and Clark for Geelong are different players. Um, so I, I think that gap bodes well. I think they've got good goal-kicking strength there, and of course Higgins will add to that as well. Daniel Wells, I played 10 games last yeah. year. We got good glimpses right at the end. What represents a dream season for him, Jared? Oh, he's, a, uh, he's capable of winning the best and fairest. The dream season for every footballer is winning the flag. So uh, that's the, the dream fulfilled for Daniel. But to get through 18 games, um, push up for the top three and the best and fairest, he's got that capacity. I mean, what I love about North Melbourne is the fact that they've now got a couple of extra A-grade ball carriers in um, Del Sando and they've got Wells, oh, sorry, and Higgins and, and Harvey. Higgins yet to be the A-grade, but potential. It allows Wells to get more freedom. And a free Wells is a match winner, and he's a great player yeah, to watch. I think Ben yes. Cunnington's underrated as an AFL clearance player. He had a patch last year for a month where he was the best clearance player mm. in the competition. Yeah, it didn't happen by fluke. This, this kid's fast-tracking to the pointy end of the elite in the competition. One of the best, best Ferris, Ferris, so yeah. he's, he's, But he doesn't get a lot of recognition no. external of the four well, walls well, of the, the kangaroo. Well, Swallow doesn't get that either, because they're, they're in and under. They're the ugly players, yeah. you know, they get, they get on the boot and get a lot it going of tackles. Forward. Yeah, exactly. I think McDonald's the one that really could spike this year. He'll become a midfielder in time. Mm. Now, whether he plays half-back this year or in the midfield, he just could be that player you're talking about. What about Jared? Attlee? You're a great mm. fan, as am I, of uh, champion yeah. data. Attlee's stats tell you he's an inside mid, and yet he's playing as, as a kid, I'm saying. As, a, yeah. as an AFL player, he's a running half-back who I think doesn't do enough with the football when he gets the football. He has still got this other gear or two to go up, and if these gears all click in at the same time, Look at kangaroos. He's, uh, he's top 30 in the competition for ground ball gets in the back 50. He understands how to get his he hands does. on the ball at ground level. Still hasn't got the confidence, which is remarkable, yeah. in his own uh, skill set to put it to other teams. He does it at training. He mm. embarrasses his fellow teammates. But he hasn't brought it to the table mm. at the... Uh, in game, if you like, when that penny drops, and I think it's not too far away, mm. then he'd become a goal kicker, he'd become a, a line breaker for him pretty quick. What, what do they do with Harvey? Do they play him in the middle or do they play him more forward or just do what they do? Let him go anyway. 
He, uh, he runs his own race pretty much, Puma, doesn't he? He has done for a long time. I mean, the fact that he's still got leg speed is just incredible. Yeah. And he's got two more years left in him at the minute, the way he looks. Gets his 400th game this year. Look, he's been a fantastic player. But I think he'll, he'll be a quality half forward. Mm. If you've got Wells and Harvey on your half forward flanks, whether they choose to stay inside mm. that scoring zone or push up and become yeah. extra on ballers, you have to go with them. Break so their I'm clearances apart a little bit with his leg speed, and you'd like him to just run straight through yeah. the stoppage. Just to drag at least a tagger with him or to disrupt the opposition set up around a stoppage. I think he's still good for that. I'm a bit like the Steve Johnson theory. I, I would like to see him play forward more. Mm. You, you got Cunnington now that you're talking about is just about elite with his uh, clearance work. Swallow that we know about. Del Sano they've got now around the ball. Mm. I want to see him stay forward and kick 40 plus goals. I and he still get his 500 possessions. I think all you blokes stop being ages. Just treat him as a 25 year old. Because <laughs> that's what he is. He's a 25 year old that will be 41. He's bloody older than you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> You're warming up around here. I like it. The final question on North Melbourne, you take it first, Jared, is top four the bare minimum? Yep, yeah, top four. They've uh, been in one prelim. They wouldn't want to go back given they've recruited for the now. Mm. No, I'm the same. I have them in my. I have them fourth at the moment, so I can't see them slipping out of that. Yeah, probably third. Third or fourth. Won 14 games last year. You've probably got to win 16 to finish top four. So it's a challenge for them. I think they're a certainty for top four. OK, that's North Melbourne. Fremantle to round out our quartet. So many questions. Are they going up or are they going down?